Welcome to Restaurant Influencers presented by Entrepreneur. My name is Sean Walchef, founder of Cali Barbecue Media. In life, in the restaurant business, and in the new creator economy, we learn through lessons and stories. Special shout out to Toast, our title sponsor of this show, for believing in the power of storytelling, the power of technology for hospitality professionals, for giving us the opportunity to share stories like this. Today, we are in Austin, Texas, so this is a road show. And I've got one of the barbecue legends, <laughs> literally one of the legends in Texas barbecue, Austin, Texas. I've got Evan Leroy of Leroy and Lewis. Evan, what's up, man? Welcome to the show. How's it going, Sean? Thanks for having me. I am honored to be sitting next to you. New York Times, top, yeah. Texas top 50. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, you guys have come so far. I've been following the journey. Uh, part of this podcast is to talk about storytelling but i like to start with our favorite random question which is where in the world is your favorite stadium stage or venue so my current favorite right now i have probably been to it the most just because we got season tickets it's q2 stadium right here austin fc it is so much fun the vibe of uh austin and with this stadium with the team uh with the supporter section it's great it's great awesome a couple of our staff have season tickets and we go there all the time q2 stadium we're gonna go we're gonna talk to our friends at toast we're gonna talk to entrepreneur we're gonna talk to some other technology professionals restaurant 365 i'm looking at you but we're gonna figure out the brands that we want to be there we are going to bring the best of the best, not just in the United States, but all over the globe, people that care about playing the game within the game. And I'm going to put you right in the middle of the pitch. I'm mm-hmm. going to say, Evan Leroy. Yeah. Tell me, how'd you get here? Into the middle of the pitch or into, into this? Into the middle of the pitch. <laughs> into this. How, how am I you, sitting how, right here? <laughs> how, did, how did you get here? Tell us the, tell us the Leroy and Lewis story. Well, um, so I believe we did we talk at the beginning of kind of like when we opened up Leroy and Lewis you and or I, was I at Friedman's? I think you and I had a discussion. When did we talk on digital hospitality? I feel like it was at Leroy and Lewis. It might have been you were at Leroy and Lewis, yeah. Either way, I grew up in Austin. I went to culinary school after I finished college at Florida State, and then I moved to New York City, worked in some restaurants up there. It was my first barbecue place. Uh, My first barbecue job was at Hill Country Barbecue. I had a great time up there. I kind of started working there because I felt homesick from Texas and eventually got tired of like the winters and like the pace of the city, moved back down (laughs) here, started working at Friedman's, and I worked there for about four years. Built up an amazing team. We had a lot of really talented people there who now own places that are top 50. Um, and then after a couple of years, it was time to do our own thing. Met up with some friends of friends who were in the industry, who had some sort of complementary skill sets uh, to mine. And then we opened a food truck. We wanted to open a brick and mortar right away, but it was hard to find the right space and everything within Austin. We thought we found a spot, then the pandemic hit. And after that, uh, we got a lot of really good press. We just kind of kept growing and we are about to open our first brick and mortar restaurant, hopefully at the end of this year. It's amazing. I feel like you guys have had so much success except you like you haven't even started yeah exactly (laughs) you you haven't even that's the coolest thing about doing content like this new media content it allows us to to share the story and to be a blip so that we can look back and remember we interviewed you at the jw marriott (laughs) restaurant 365 event we're here and we're having this conversation you guys hadn't even opened your brick and mortar yeah and then you know come what do you think it's going to look like in five years? I mean, the the, the crazy thing for us is they, people ask, you know, how do you do the media business? How do you do content? And I say, we build our media just like we build our barbecue. Yeah, and exactly. And that's low and slow. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> you, a very good point. You can't force things yeah, in life. Yeah, we've been, uh, you know, building our own content channels pretty low and slow through Patreon, through YouTube. Uh, and hopefully in five years, those are sustaining themselves yes. is, as as a separate business and you know doing its own income stream much the way that you've laid out the path uh with what you're doing now and hopefully the restaurant is chugging along doing great hopefully we have a brewery open or starting to open by then too so yeah we have a lot of things we want to do um you know nothing has ever come fast or quickly or easily and we're prepared for that but 
We just want to do things the right way. Are you still doing content on Patreon? Oh yeah, every week. So tell me about tell tell the audience about. I mean, I, I remember now. Yeah. I remember specifically out of all the people I've ever interviewed, I think you're the only hospitality professional that was doing something really cool and unique on Patreon. Yeah, because that's how I think I sought you out in the beginning or how our paths crossed because nobody else was doing something like this other than you. <laughs> and, then, and then I was like, this Crazy guy probably asshole. like knows. <laughs> and he's a barbecue guy too, right? It's yeah. not just in the hospitality yeah. industry, but it's barbecue. Yeah. So we in, as soon as the pandemic started, I realized that nobody's going to come out to the truck. No, you know, we are going to lose a lot of money. Uh, and we need to bring whatever food that we are serving to people in their homes, not through a delivery service, but through like whatever they're going to be doing, which is sitting in front of a screen. Yep. And so we are we were already really good at taking photos and like easy video, like real type videos for Instagram and stuff. And saw our uh, our other friend, Brad Robinson, who you should have on here, Chud's Barbecue, okay. really huge on YouTube. Uh, he was also kind of getting into this at the same time. And so he started a YouTube. We started a Patreon um, and his kind of grew, grew, grew while he was working with us. He separated eventually. So now explain to everybody. So Patreon, we're talking about paid subscription. Yes, for content. exactly. Video content. Video content. The idea was that we just film ourselves prepping once a week. Awesome. And do it dish by dish, make our way through the menu and just kind but of essentially teach sharing the secrets. Yeah, exactly. Like but if, in, some, if somebody wants to yeah. learn how to do the bar, like, oh, I want to get in the bar. I mean, how many people have told you a <laughs> lot, a lot, actually, truck, or I want to get into the barbecue business quite a few we, i'm sure more yeah. more here in texas than in california for us yeah we, well we actually see the uh patreon the youtube and kind of our classes that we do uh -huh. as like an education slash media because that is like it's really about building up community and that's how we do it. We do the online community and then they can't wait for to, to you know, come and visit Austin. Yep. And then also the people who do come to visit us at the classes engage on the discord and on the Patreon and yes. do that online. So it, always, it comes back around and it really is like self-fulfilling and we don't even have to do anything to it. They just like interact with each other and sharing recipes mm -hmm. and secrets and tips and everything with each other. We have multiple people who have come to our classes and then have started channels and just say awesome. on YouTube, just being like, hey, I did my first pop up. These are all the mistakes I made because I made this video because I, nobody told me all these things before. Wow. So and all that kind of stuff. And it's not just recipes on our Patreon. It is stuff like that. Like there's one where Sawyer, my business partner, is basically talking to camera. And she's like, OK, this is all the steps we have to go through to get inspected every year. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that stuff is, you know. It may be boring for some, but it's like really helpful and insightful for other people. And it's, it's literally also, why we created this show. Yeah. It's those those secrets like a health inspection. Everyone else, the majority, 99 percent of the world would be who the hell would give a shit about that. Yeah. We don't care about the 99 percent of the world. You care about the one percent of raving fans. Right. That goes, Thank you. Yeah. I no one's made this content. No one's given me the path. You saved my ass mm -hmm. exactly. by making this video. You enlightened me. You helped me raise money or not raise money, open a store, not open a store. These are all key things that um, are the guiding principles of why we make the content. 100%. We were hoping that someone made the content for us. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. And there were a few people. I mean, there's so many people that have paved the way for us for podcasting, for you know all the content that we do on all the different platforms. But for us, it's more about audio video words and images you know too yeah. many times people get bogged down by the platform mm -hmm. oh i hate tiktok or I yeah hate, i don't want to do youtube i don't have a big enough you know video budget to do youtube and you're like stop overthinking it yeah people really need to get over the fact that uh the first thing that they're going to do is going to be bad Anything, anything you do the Are first you time. You made bad barbecue when you first started. Oh, of course, I made bad barbecue. <laughs> I made bad videos. I made bad everything. When I f did the first thing I ever do of anything is bad. Yeah, so, everybody is. Yeah, it's we gonna all be bad. Are. Yeah, but the next one is a little bit better, and the next one after that's better. So, I mean, the part of you go back and watch our old videos, right, on Patreon or YouTube now, and it uh, you can watch us make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, and that's part of it. Uh, that's. And it's also rich for content because you can just do the another one of the same thing and be like, okay, well, here's what we updated. Yeah. And it's, you know, it, it has value and it's interesting. It's what do you porn. think prevents people? So we, we talk about the reason why we make this show is we know that there is a creator economy and what we believe in is the, the business creator economy. So 
creators, people that are really good at making B2C content, mm -hmm. they can make a fantastic TikTok channel and have hundreds of thousands, millions of followers, but they don't own a business. Yeah, They're hoping that TikTok pays them. Same yeah. with YouTube, same with Instagram. There's business owners who are really good and they understand that people are on social media. They know that for their restaurant, they need to make content to get people to come in. But very rarely are they willing to do what you're doing, which is sharing the secrets, talking about the business behind barbecue, mm -hmm. letting other people know essentially the game within the game. Yeah. So for you, when you think about this big opportunity that's out there, you said yourself, this YouTube channel that you guys have started, the Patreon account, you're making an investment. And I'm sure there's been people that have come to you and said, why are you doing that? What's the ROI oh, yeah. of aren't you wasting your time doing a YouTube video when the when you hit top five of the Texas Texas 50? Texas top 50, you're top five, you have lines literally for days and you're taking the time to take your smartphone out, walk and give your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Why aren't you in line? Because I mean, it it makes us money. Very simply, <laughs> it makes us money. Putting it out there, it's, if, if I can cook a brisket yeah. and cut it up and serve you know 10 to 20 people yeah. with that, then that's an exchange for a good or a widget you yes. know it's a thing it is a one for one yep. and if you make a brisket and film it and it's beautiful and you cut it up and you put it online and you serve it to thousands of people yes you know you're gonna make money on that two times mm -hmm. and so every time we're testing a new recipe we're selling it to the people and we're also selling it online it's it just makes sense it's also marketing and advertising for your business Correct. that pays for you you don't have to pay for marketing and advertising you Correct. do it yourself and then it also is another income stream yeah and it also grows your audience at the same time it's just a complete no-brainer i don't the only thing holding other people back from it i think is just a little bit of like fear of like being on camera and stuff of which I don't know. I think like with the generation, with everybody now just kind of on the phones all the time, I think that's going to be, I, I think we're going to see a lot more people doing it is yeah. what I'm saying. When you think about your restaurant space, how do you look at it from a content lens? It has to be well lit. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be yes. a lot of uh, natural diffused light, uh, which we are looking for, uh, you know, which we're working on in the new space. We have essentially a space, like a retail space in the new restaurant that is gonna have a to-go counter, mm -hmm. but that to-go counter is gonna be multifunction. It's basically where we're gonna set up and do kind of any kind of like shooting or filming Sweet. or anything that's like talk to camera, mm -hmm. intros, outros, that kind of stuff, you know, different people on. Um, there's also plenty of room and stuff, you know, outside and over, outside by the pits, over in the back kitchen, over in the barbecue line. So, I mean, we're just, I'm just excited about all the prospects of this new place. Like there's going to be a bunch of new menu items yeah. that we need to shoot. Like then also the entire process of opening it. So it's, you know, every single thing that we do now is an opportunity for content. Yep. It's awesome. Because it's you're fun. documenting the journey too. Yeah. And people, well, also the staff gets really into it too. And it's also a recruiting tool. People <laughs> see it from, you know, wherever else. And they say, oh my God, I want to come work with you guys so bad. It looks like so much fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they do. And they're awesome employees because they're already bought in. They already know the score. They already are like into the food. And now they're like, it's like being in your favorite show, right? You, you. Yeah. That's exactly right. I mean, we the way that we look at, you know, our our barbecue restaurant and media center is, you know, the old way was an open kitchen where mm -hmm. essentially there's a wall and instead of having a wall, you can see into the kitchen. Yeah. Well, now a true open kitchen in the new economy is on the Internet. Absolutely. It's like, how do we share as much as possible of our process yeah. of how we of the things that we do? I mean, I posted a probably our most popular TikTok video on our Cali barbecue channel has, you know, 1.3 million views, which isn't a lot for TikTok, but for us, it was our first yeah. million plus views. And it's Bernice, our pit master, you know, during the pandemic, just taking ribs out of foil, part of our process. Yeah. Another video that I posted was her just loading on pit uh, racks of ribs onto the smoker. Half of the video are people bitching and complaining that the smoker is nasty and dirty and needs to be cleaned. <laughs> like, obviously, never run a barbecue <laughs> yeah, restaurant yeah, before. Yeah. But, like, 
when I talk to restaurant owners and business owners about social media and about posting content, I, I can hear and I can see the fear of them posting that video. Like that video would prevent them because someone said your kitchen's dirty. Why aren't they using gloves? Why is there not having a hairnet? Like things like micro problems yeah. that they see in the video that they don't understand the context. But then that says, okay, well, I don't want, you know, my kitchen not to be in the best light. Yeah. And the truth is. Everything is revealed on the internet. Like right? it's, it's the best and worst place. It's the you best know? and it's, the worst. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's reality. It's, yeah. It, like it, what happens yeah. on the internet happens in real life. Yeah. Every, everybody's there. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody. Even the people that suck. Even the people that suck. <laughs> They're definitely Correct. there. And there's people that suck that come in real life to our restaurants. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Huge news, Toast, our primary technology partner at our barbecue restaurants in San Diego and the primary technology partner of so many of the guests that we have on this show have announced they are expanding their business offerings with Google. So now if you search on Google Maps and you sign up for Toast Tables or Toast Waitlist, you will have the opportunity to improve the digital hospitality experience of the guest, allow them to book through the maps into the Toast Reservation system. One of the biggest difficulties that restaurant guests have is when they search for your restaurant and they want a table, they do not have an easy solution to book a table or to get on a wait list. This is huge news for the restaurant industry, huge news for guests and huge news for you, the restaurant owner. Check out Toast Tables today and find out the new integrated solution that they have. This is something that we've wanted for a long time. How do you integrate reservations, wait lists into your point of sale? Toast has done it. Check it out. So what do you do when you talk to people, you know, you have so many friends that are own business owners that have looked at what you guys are doing on YouTube and on Patreon, what kind of encouragement do you give them? Uh, I mean, I tell the same thing to them that I would anybody else, you know, the first ones are not going to do good. It's going to take a lot of like, you know, very small incremental advancement. Uh, it's not, it does nothing if any of that stuff happens overnight. Yeah. So we have this guy working for us now who has a couple other like barbecue places and a whiskey distillery who he's working for. And we all do like a lot of work together too. Mm -hmm. So Brad used to do a bunch of content for us. Now he got too busy and we hired this other guy who's awesome. And he also does stuff with interstellar barbecue and they are doing an awesome job. I definitely encourage everybody to go check out their YouTube stellar? channel. Yeah. Okay. Cause they're number two in Texas. Wow. We're number five. Sweet. But uh, they, you know. Who's number one? Goldie's. Goldie's. Do yeah. they do content? Uh, <laughs> I mean, kind of. <laughs> That's a no. <laughs> Goldie's, if you're watching, there's a plenty. There's a whole playground. It's called the Internet. And we should be posting on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the crazy thing is that, I mean, for me. I've come here to conferences and I go to the National Restaurant Association show and I'm talking to like brands that do hundreds of millions of dollars in sales, like mm -hmm. publicly traded companies. And they have marketing departments, yet yeah. they don't appreciate social media for what it is. I feel like once you get so big, like a lot of those people like really try not to put everything out there yes. the way that we're trying to too many levels of approval. Yes, exactly. It's too much like red tape, yep. too much kind of corporate stuff. And so this is what's nice about, you know, our structure, our business right now is that we're small enough, but we're kind of like semi known enough to yep. where it's really interesting for people to watch. Um, you know, but we're not, you know, we don't have to deal with all this corporate stuff. I'm the owner of the yep. business. I'm we're one of the owners of the business. And I'm the one who's putting it all out there. Yeah. That's awesome. Can you tell me about this list? Yeah. This magical list. Text monthly barbecue list. So it's done every four years. Every four years. It's essentially like the, you know, Olympics or an election or wow. something like that. Wow. I didn't know it was every four years. And it is. And who puts it out? It's headed. It's put out by text monthly but, but it's picked up by every other periodical yeah absolutely like it's new known york, new york times picked it up yeah it's or known they run their own stuff they ran their own thing which was essentially like uh what has happened in texas barbecue since aaron franklin opened because uh, okay. that was a big turning point uh and there's just a lot of different people doing different stuff and mm -hmm. it's all really exciting and it's kind of better than it's ever been really and that's the conclusion that everybody's really come to but 
Daniel Vaughn, the barbecue editor at Texas Monthly, is yep. the one who takes on the project. He's not the only one who tastes everything, but I think he has approval over the ultimate list. And it's a big deal. It launches people's careers. Um, you know, it solidifies uh, places as you know being generational or legendary. Uh, it is a, and I could, I put it this way to our team too. It's a historical document. Yeah, it is a periodical that will live, you know, on the internet, but also probably like microfilm yeah. in libraries. Yeah. like this is this is a chance to kind of make a really big impact and in like culture and food in Texas, which is really important to me because I like barbecue. Uh, <laughs> and it's, we got number five this past time. It came out in 2021 and, you know, kind of leading up to it, we were really talking about it a lot. Our entire team was like putting together who they thought would be on, you know, which spots on the, everybody's like thinking about Did it you constantly, think you'd make constantly, the list? constantly, constantly. I thought that we yeah, had sure. quality had enough to make the list. And we also serve s only some things on certain days. Did you serve Daniel? Yeah, we did. So you knew when he was coming? Kind of. Ish. So we, I knew, mean, he, you, you know who he is. We, so like when we, he comes, you I know. know who he is. Uh, we knew that he was kind of doing like the final judging because uh -huh. they would have to turn You don't have to submit to right? go to this print. Is, no, no, no. The, he just comes, he just goes around and yeah. And we knew that there were only like a couple different Saturdays he could come. And then because we only serve like this bacon rib and our like brisk, like the kind of things that he was going to come and taste. Mm -hmm. It could only be on a Saturday. So it was like one of two. And we saw like, you know, saw him getting out of the car. And then we just, you know, made the plate. It all looked great. We we're really happy with it. And afterwards, I was just like, <laughs> I was just I just felt like kind of a weight off the shoulders because what? we needed to do was done. But then yeah. there was another couple like weeks or at least a month of waiting and just like, Oh God, what about this? What about that? God, what about this? Um, but when it came out, it was, how did, how did you find out? Well, the list digital, leaked. Digital? Oh, really? <laughs> the list leaked. So, you know, a bunch of us were kind of texting and everybody found out. Um, You're not but, gonna reveal who told you? No, but you, ne <laughs> but you never know who, uh, but you never know if it's exactly correct until uh, until you it, see until it. it comes out. And so that morning, I think it was a Monday, it came out. We digitally, digitally. Yeah. Is there a print version as well? Yes, there's a print version. So it's as like well. an actual magazine. It's an actual magazine, but it came out digitally, and it was done really well. Like all the I don't know how to describe it, but all the scroll like features mm -hmm. and like it was just designed really really well. Photos. Um, photos. Yeah. Uh, it looked great. We were like our links? tray was the lead like photo. Like links to your website? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they linked to our there? website. Oh, Some yeah. Some good yeah, SEO. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. They didn't say anything about the Patreon or YouTube. Which, it's okay. That's what entrepreneurs are for. They also didn't say anything about, uh, you know, us like sourcing locally. We're the, yep. As far as I know, we're the only barbecue restaurant on the top 50 or maybe possibly within Texas who just pays really close attention to sourcing. We only purchase animals from Texas that are raised in Texas. Wow. Um, so very, very high attention to the quality, but that also was not mentioned. Uh, but we had, you know, a huge staff party. We were obviously super excited and then we just prepped and prepped and prepped and prepped. And ever since it's been, we've had a long line and it's been great. You said you've doubled sales. I mean, at least you're well, YouTube, that doubled your YouTube sales. Video, your and YouTube then, video so yeah. Good. And then somebody feed Phil came out and that tripled sales. Who did? <laughs> somebody feed Phil on Netflix. Okay. Yeah. That was like, that's the biggest piece of press we've ever got. Really? Yeah. When Huge. did that come out? Actually one year to the day after the Texas monthly. <laughs> list no came way. Out. Yeah. That's insane. It was wild. So that was actually even more. Oh yeah, impactful, hugely impactful because, because people Netflix see yeah, people see Texas Monthly as a state periodical. Yeah, you know, if you're not in Texas, yeah, if you don't understand what it, the significance of it, but uh, Netflix has like you know, however many hundred million Hundreds subscribers, of millions of subscribers, and they're seeing like our burger is the main like oh really picture for that episode and that season. It's pretty sweet. That's insane. Yeah, <laughs> that's really really cool. Um, it's very impressive. So for you, when you think, I mean, one of the cool things for me is sitting here with you, you sent me an email earlier this year, mm -hmm. basically like, Hey, Sean, do you want to pitch South by 
South yeah. by Southwest about new media content and food and why it's important, why we're doing Patreon and why you're doing this, you know, content with this podcast and the shows that you're doing. Yeah. I'm like, of course, <laughs> of course, I want to go pitch South by Southwest. So if somebody from South by Southwest happens yeah. to see this episode, why do you think we should have a panel or we should get um, something going for the things that are that, that we're working on? Because I think there's a there's an entire hidden industry here yep. and an entire hidden economy here. There's a lot of content that, you, that I would just be down to just watch, to yeah. just just view. Even the very simplest stuff that I watch on YouTube is just like a POV camera of somebody in service. And I will yeah. just watch that end on end on there's end. Some I will watch TikToker, them make... There's some TikToker subway shop yeah. TikToker that literally just makes subway sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> but like he has like tens of millions of followers or, or it's like unbelievable. you know everybody here is probably or everybody who's listening to this is probably mcdonald's once in their life there's pov working the line at mcdonald yeah like it's things online and you're just like well that's how they do that you know or it's just like huh they really are cooking back there huh <laughs> no, but but that's uh, you it's hit interesting it, you, it's very interesting and I, I you know that's what i talk to all these brands you know hospitality brands from anybody that does you know, if you do grease traps, if you do fire suppression, there's somebody yeah. somewhere. Yeah. You don't need hundreds of thousands of followers. Exactly. You just need the right recruiting person where it's like maybe somebody's really into fire suppression. Yeah. Making sure restaurants don't burn down. Yeah, exactly, man. I mean, there's also I mean, you employ people to come here and to yep. shoot this stuff and to do audio and to edit and yep. to produce and to write it all. So all of that could exist under a small you know a shorter umbrella yep. of just the food industry correct like food and media yeah 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 i mean there's so many you know david Ch there's not so many there's very few people that are doing it but this is a growing economy mm -hmm. you know the world that we live in understanding that storytelling in real life has built traditional brick and mortar businesses but now we're at a point where people start to understand well every single person coming in here has a 4k camera in their pocket exactly so not only is it the user generated content, but what can the business do? Mm -hmm. And the more that you learn how to do it, the better you get at it. And then you can start to find different revenue streams like Patreon, like YouTube, like everything else that you're doing. Yeah. We're all just telling a story, right? With yeah. the food, it's the story of, you know, where you learned how to cook it or why you're cooking it or what you want to do for your community. And there are so many other tools to tell those stories that are just not being taken advantage of. So since this is going to be a historical piece, a <laughs> content piece on entrepreneur, I want you to tell the audience what your thoughts are, your hopes are for the upcoming restaurant so that we can look back and go, oh my gosh, that's what you were thinking and look at what happened. Yeah. For the upcoming restaurant. So restaurant one. So hopefully From food truck to restaurant one. Yeah. Hopefully we open before South by Southwest of 2024. Okay. That is really what I would like. I would be, I would like to be open in the first quarter of next year. The first quarter of next year. I would like to maintain focus on whole animal butchery. I would really like to, our, our entire goal is always to just been to get people to stop asking for brisket <laughs> you know, just like, just, you know, get something else. Just ask get for something, something else. else. <laughs> just, we are trying to like reveal other stuff that's like every uh, other cut on the animal is like just as good. Yeah. Uh, and there's different ways to do them all. So I, I don't know. It's just like, oh, you know, I risk it. Bye. Yeah. But that's okay. That's okay. Because a restaurant that's for everybody is for nobody. Yes. You got to have like your thing. You got to have your niche. You got to have, the, you know, we want to be the place to where have a bunch of different things on the menu. That's the only place you can get them. And if you want the brisket and ribs and beans, potato salad and coleslaw and banana pudding, then there's a lot of other places you can get those. Yeah. But our place is the only one that you can get everything on our menu. What kind of advice would you have as someone that's listening about partnerships in business? I would say complementary skill sets are really important. I'm a chef. My wife does PR and outward facing communication. Our partners do business development slash brewing and front of house, uh, you know, everything front of house, top of house. So we have a really good ownership team. Also complete honesty, really giving your partners the benefit of the doubt 
I've seen partnerships dissolve because of like greed and just like lack of communication. Um, it's a relationship. So you have to put work into that relationship. How does technology play a role in how you see rolling out the restaurant, getting barbecue to people? Technology is going to be huge because we have been really limited and bottlenecked at the food truck for a long time. Mm -hmm. We're also, you know, who do you use at the food truck for point of sale? Toast now. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't even know that. See that toast? <laughs> we do. Look at that. And at Mama Fry, our other food truck. Yes, we are. That's Look why that. we made the switch. See that? Yeah. I can't even write this. This the yeah. show writes itself. We used to use <laughs> another iPad based POS system. Um, but we just recently switched and it's a lot more functional. We like it a lot better. We used to have to, um, you know, call out the order and then it's just like, you got to yeah. make it real quick and remember, but now there's the nice screen, get the yep. double tap. It's great. Amazing, right? It's great. Kitchen display screen. I know. No, no tickets. <laughs> I know. It's nice. Dude, we, were, we were at a unnamed, Never again. An, unnamed, <laughs> an unnamed restaurant in an unnamed hotel. <laughs> And we were sitting there waiting for our dinner and the dinner did not come for 45 minutes. The, oh, the no. restaurant wasn't full and the, the server came up and goes, I'm so sorry. We our, The kitchen dropped your ticket. I'm like, ticket? You guys don't have a kitchen display screen? Yeah, it's like, no, we're on micros. I'm like, oh, that's why you guys yeah. need to be oh, on well. Oh, well. Oh, well. Uh, but yeah, so we have bottlenecked a lot recently. So we are going to have to use uh, online ordering through Toast. Yep. Uh, handheld ordering in the line for beer and you know appetizer stuff through toast and obviously we're gonna have to have so we're gonna have like a barbecue line and then a back kitchen and stuff's gonna have to make its way to the right places so you know trying to use technology to kind of disperse the food as fast mm -hmm. as we can to all the different people as opposed to just like bottlenecking everything slow food fast yeah yeah yeah, that and I mean, we're going to keep going forward with every, you know, everything online, everything with the Patreon and YouTube and hopefully, you know, starting other things with wherever that takes us. That's awesome. What's the, the name of the other food truck? Mama Fried. Mama Fried. Are you going to keep that open? Yeah, absolutely. That's the plan. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That one's a lot of fun because we take some of our extra barbacoa and chili and other stuff and kind of put it on fries and they do smoked and fried wings and it's more of like a festival brand. Like we had people asking us to do like a bunch of kind of big like ACL type festivals. And we're like, we're not going to do that much brisket ever in our lives. I don't ever want to do that. Yeah. Uh, so, but I will like fry a frozen corn dog <laughs> and just like make it efficient and make it good. And like, you know, do chili fries and stuff. So that's what that's for. That's awesome. So every single Wednesday, every single Friday on the social audio app Clubhouse, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Come up on stage. Tell us about your restaurant. If you're a creator, if you're a food influencer, if you're in sales, marketing, technology, um, we have a growing group. It's a micro community of digital hospitality leaders, but we want you to join us. Uh, every week, we also do a social shout out. This week's going to at Barbecue Hunk. That's Stover, the producer of this show. <laughs> Stover, we uh, we know how much work you do in Portland to support all of the media and storytelling and the clubhouse calls um, for getting me connected with Evan and who we've kept in touch with digitally. That's the beautiful thing about storytelling is um, I feel like we've already met so many times yeah, yeah. and I know your story and I tell other people about your story. I told every single person here at the conference that I've got the barbecue legend himself coming in here. So um, get you to sign some autographs on the way out. <laughs> Um, but do you have a, a shout out, someone that you'd like to, to let them know they, they got a shout out on entrepreneur, one person, one person, I'm going to shout out my friend, Christopher McGee at briskets here in Austin. You okay. guys should, if you have any at time, briskets? yeah, you got at briskets, at handle? briskets, five, one, two, it's spelled okay. like biscuits. Okay. At briskets, five, one, two, cause he does barbecue biscuit sandwiches Okay, for breakfast. His sausage is amazing. We worked together at Freeman's. We were co-pit co master at Freeman's. Um, everything at his food truck is incredible. Right now, it is our heat week, uh, which is the week of the year where Leroy and Lewis does five different spicy specials, one each day, and they get increasingly spicy. And if you make it through, you get like a gift card and stuff. But we're collaborating on one with him Sweet. that's going to be like a spicy biscuit, pepper jelly, 
Chris for McGee briskets in Austin. Awesome. There you go. We'll put that link. And then how can people subscribe to Patreon? Tell us a YouTube channel where, how can they follow you personally? Yeah. Follow me mostly on Instagram at Evan Leroy barbecue and at Leroy and Lewis. Follow us on Patreon. Definitely subscribe. We have a couple different tiers. We have like an $8 tier that is just our once a week videos. Brand new every week. We have a $30 tier, which allows you to come stage with us, to book a stage, to come cool. and see our kitchen, to make your own plate, to come visit us and see actually in person how everything works. Then we also have a YouTube channel. We are about a year back on our Patreon videos. We're kind of cataloged all of them. One video a week on Patreon, two a week on YouTube until we catch Separate up. Separate content? It's the same content, but once we catch up, we will have new content Sweet. exclusive to YouTube. Awesome. We'll always keep Patreon one week, and then that will continue to premiere like a month late, essentially, lag time. And then once we catch up, this will be probably early next year, we'll start doing exclusive content for YouTube. Very cool. Well, we appreciate you guys. As always, stay curious, get involved. Don't be afraid to ask for help. If you want to reach out to me, it's at Sean P. Walchef, S-H-A-W-N-P. W A L C H E F that's on Instagram, TikTok, X, Threads, LinkedIn, all the platforms. I'm weirdly available. Um, but we care about you, your story, your restaurant, the media that you're creating. Um, Evan, thank you. Thank you for having me. Can't wait to do our South by Southwest yeah. keynote together. That's and right. uh can't wait to come and visit the new restaurant. Yeah. Appreciate you. Thank you. Appreciate you. The best way that you can help us with the show is to subscribe and write a review. We love the opportunity to connect with you no matter where you are on the globe, no matter what restaurant you are running. Please send us a DM on social at Sean P. Walchef. If you are interested in toast, if you want to improve your digital hospitality, please send me a DM. I will get you in touch with a local toast representative. We appreciate you listening to this show. The best way that you can help this show is share it with a friend and we will catch you all next week or we will see you on one of the digital playgrounds that we call social media.